Hi there again. It is uh, December 20th, 2020. We are almost done with 2020, but it seems like um, it might not end. You know, we have an election that isn't going to end. Um, we have a year that, you know, we were all hoping that we can start a new year, uh, 2021, but there's just this, this little voice in the back of my head, this creeping feeling <laughs> that 2020 will never end, that somehow it's going it, to, it's, it's just still going to be there when we work up, wake up December for, or January 1st. Um, all right, so let's, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you, Father, for uh, the opportunity to read and to hear your word, Father. Thank you for um, the, just the peculiar time that this is, the blessing that this is, the time that uh, unique in history that uh, all of us have access to your word, that it's not um, limited to just priests or rabbis or or churches, uh, church houses, or um, synagogues, Father, that we all have uh, your word at our fingertips. So, Father, help us. We ask that we can be um, worthy of this this gift, Father, worthy of this um, opportunity that you've given us to be able to dive deep in and really get it, understand what's written, Father. So, we ask that your Spirit will, will teach us this evening. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. So, if we remember, last time we um, left off, Joseph was, was thrown into prison by Potiphar because his wife accused him of impropriety, or um, accused him of trying to have uh, relations with him, when, which it was the other way around. And so he's been in prison. We don't know how long, but he's been there long enough to gain the trust of the 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 captain of the the prison to where uh, Joseph pretty much runs runs the house. Joseph, all that takes place inside this prison, Joseph Joseph is the one that does it, um, and he himself is a prisoner too. So it it has says a lot for his character that even as a prisoner, he is entrusted with um, all the goings on uh, in the prison. Uh, we also saw that he's a, a very empathetic and compassionate man because when he saw the, the, the baker and the, the butler, Pharaoh's baker and butler were thrown in with him, um, the, he saw that they were they had a dream and they were very upset about it uh, and he, he inquired with them. He asked them what, why they looked so sad and why they looked so concerned. Um, and then we learned that they both have a dream the same night and J uh, Joseph is able to interpret them. Now, he doesn't, he, he, he blatantly says, it's not me. He says, I can, it's not me that's doing it, it's it's my God that interprets it. So, we see that Joseph, as a young boy, is able to, he, he's given dreams, and now he's interpreting dreams. So, he interprets the dream, and he tells the uh, poor baker, in three days you're going to go and get hanged. And he tells the baker, in three days you'll be restored to your, your previous services, and you'll be uh, the Pharaoh's cupbearer again. So he tells the, the, the baker, he says, hey, look, remember me when you get out there. Uh, tell Pharaoh about me um, uh, so I can get out. Uh, and uh, that's where we pick up, pick up less, because the, um, the, the, the butler was, was uh, he was freed, and he didn't mention Joseph. Um, so Joseph is still in prison, and uh, we'll pick up in chapter 41, verse 1. And it came to pass that at the end of two full years, so the, the, the butler's released, and two years later, so for two years, the butler totally forgot about Joseph, didn't say anything, didn't do anything. So Joseph continued to be in the jail for two more years. That Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine. Now, in the King James Version, it says kine. And in other versions, it, it, it may say cattle, cows. Um, but that's what it was. It, a kine is a cattle. It's, it's uh, 
bovine. In, um, so that's what kind means. And fat fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill favored and, la and lean fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the bank of the river. And the ill favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well favored and fat kind, so Pharaoh awoke. Now, you know, we think this, this you know, this is. Um, a weird dream, but we don't look at it as like a, a nightmarish dream. Um, but from an agrarian lifestyle, or from, see, even in, in the heights of Egypt, they were still uh, an agrarian society. They still raised cattle, they still uh, raised crops and farmed and so forth and so on. So, cattle, uh, bovine, being that they are typically a very... Um, they can be stubborn, but they're 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 not an aggressive um, species or aggressive animals. Uh, now the males obviously can be can be um, aggressive, but it's just not in their nature to be uh, carnivorous. Let's put it that way, or uh, as well as to be um, um, cannibals, eating their own. Uh, so when he sees skinny cows coming up. It could be disturbing, but then to see these skinny cows consume and eat the, the large cows, I'm sure that was very disturbing uh, because cows don't eat cows. And, you know, we, we see they consume them, and we see in cartoons, um, you know, like the, the Prince of Egypt cartoon, that it's very sanitized that the lean cows will open up their mouths and they just kind of in a mist dry in the the um, the fat cows I think it was graphic I think it was very disturbing because it woke Pharaoh up in his sleep so these lean cows probably were gnawing and chewing and eating on um, the the fat cows and eating them alive um, I think it was uh, that that sounds a little bit more disturbing to me than it does just benignly swallowing them up or eating them whole. No, I, it was it was not a, a pretty dream. Where were we? Verse five. And he slept and dreamed a second time. Now, was this the second night? Was this another? I think it was the same night. I think he had both dreams in the same night. Verse 5. And he slept and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. Rank is not like something that smells rank or, or nasty. Rank means fat, means plump and healthy and, and full. Verse 6, And behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the east wind, sprung up after them. I find it interesting that it, it, it specifically mentions the east wind. When this, when this famine came, it seems to me that a hot, dry wind came from the east, and that's what caused the land to dry up, to dry out. Um, now, do they have easterly winds now in that area? I don't know. That'd be something interesting to look into, see what kind of weather patterns they typically have. Because we know here in North America, we have a, a jet stream that runs. It usually comes into the United States in the upper northeast, uh, around Oregon, Washington, Canada area. And then it'll dip down into the, the, uh, the Rocky Mountains in the Midwest, and then it'll it'll often swoop back up and then go out through the north the northeast I said northeast or northwest from the northeast and it's pretty common it's, it's a it's a kind of like this shape and it's that's uh, pretty consistent now it varies and it moves a little bit but it makes me wonder if this east wind was not common or typical in his dream that this was something completely different that they were accustomed to and if this is indeed 
a a completely new or an aberration of a, of a weather pattern that that uh, the pharaoh was seeing. Verse 7, And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And so it sounds like to me in this, when it says, And behold, it was a dream, that it was one of those dreams that, that felt very real, very ominous. This wasn't just a weird... Um, dream, you know how oftentimes you're dreaming something really weird and you, somehow you know you're dreaming and you know there's just reality doesn't make sense in these dreams and so when you wake up you're like you're not surprised you wake up and you're like oh what a, what a weird dream but this was a dream it sounds like to me that that felt very real and it was an ominous fearful dream um and so when he woke up, he was, he was relieved. He was glad that when he woke up, it was only a dream. But it still disturbed him. Verse 5. And he slept and... Oh, no. We already did that. Um, verse 8. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream... But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. So obviously Pharaoh, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, we ourselves would probably think the same thing, but we have two dreams back to back. The common theme in them is seven healthy and self, seven uh, weathered and, and poor health, uh, devouring the, the healthy. Again, this is just like when we wake up and we, we have a, a very ominous dream that that is so realistic or so real and so ominous that you that you say to yourself, Man, this dream has to mean something. This this dream didn't just come out of this wasn't my normal dreams. This was there was something to these. I'm sure Pharaoh felt very convinced that there was a purpose and a and a reason behind these dreams of his. But obviously, no one, none of his wise men, none of his magicians could give him in an interpretation that was satisfactory. They may have tried to and offered their, their opinions, but nothing seemed satisfactory. And I've had that situation where I've had um, an ominous dream, and then I, you know, I sit there and I think about it, I think about it, I can't, I it just, I know there's something to it, and I don't, I can't piece it together. And then I'll, sh I'll share it to my wife or I'll share it to uh, a family member or someone close. And they'll nail it. They'll, they'll say something. They're like, well, this is what I think it means. And then once you hear it, you're like, oh, wow. Yes, that is it. So it's not that none of his magicians, we don't know. It doesn't say whether they did give him interpretations or not. Just that um, none of them could satisfy him. Satisfy him. None of them... Um, And Pharaoh told them the dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. So, verse 9. Then spake the chief butler, after two years of being out of prison, finally says, oh, hey, I remember some block, some bloke in the, uh, the prison. Verse 9. Then spake the chief butler and Pharaoh, saying, you know what? I remember a guy back in prison. Now, this isn't exactly what's in here, but this is just what he's doing. Um, I do remember my faults this day. Verse 10. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in inward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, and I and he dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there, there, and there was there with us a, a young man, an Hebrew. 
So we don't know how exactly how old Joseph is. Not yet. It's going to be revealed later. But he was he was probably in his 20s, a young man. And again, it's interesting that they say he was a Hebrew. Whatever Joseph was doing, whether in Potiphar's house or in the prison, he maintained a sense of who he was. I don't think it was just through circumcision that they knew he was a Hebrew. I don't think that was something that was flaunted in public with anybody who came across to say, oh, hey, yeah, 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 you're Hebrew, you're circumcised. No. There, is a, there was a way he was raised, he was brought up, he acted, he carried himself where people knew he was a Hebrew because Hebrews had probably a particular lifestyle. They were different somehow. Much, And I said this before, much like Amish or, or Mormons or, or Jehovah Witnesses, there were things about them that you, you could you could be like, oh yeah, you're a you're you know you're a Mormon, you're you're an Amish. Well, they same thing with Joseph. He was his lifestyle was not the same as the Egyptians. They, it was a, a very unique, significant lifestyle, or the way he carried himself. And he verse twelve, and Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard, and he. T he, we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams to each man according to his dream that he did interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Verse 14. The Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto the Pharaoh. It makes me wonder if he shaved himself. Okay. Did he have a beard and he shaved off his beard? Or did he have hair and he shaved off his hair? What was it about the Egyptians? I mean, we see often in, in uh, hieroglyphs and in movies, Egyptians are often cleanly shaven heads as well as faces. They don't have beards. If they do, it's, it's, it's cropped and they got just like a goatee kind of beard. Um, I don't know. So Joseph obviously, it might have been that Joseph was living like Hebrew. He was growing. It, it's assumed, we don't know for sure because we don't know what Hebrews look like. But it's assumed that Hebrews, much like what we learned about the law of Moses and the Israelites, they grew beards. Um, and they grew um, well they didn't necessarily grow their hair but they grew beards now and this is this is my theory behind it um, the reason why Israelites grew beards the reason why they they um, they were they, they valued the beard is because if you think about it the one thing that sets apart a man from women and children it's facial hair. Women don't have facial hair, and children don't have facial hair. So that's the mark of a man. That's 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 like the first thing that when you're in a crowd um, and you see a, a bunch of faces and heads, there's no doubt in your mind you see somebody with a beard. Oh, that's a man. But nowadays, it's not uncommon, uh, especially in the '80s when you know guys were wearing these this long hair. You'd see somebody walking down the street from behind and you couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman because they were wearing tight jeans and long hair and t-shirts and both men and women did that. Um, I think it was a gender uh, reinforcement. Um, I might be way off my rocker. I might, I mean, this is just my own speculation. This is my own thoughts. Um, but that's, that's, it very well could have been that he was fully bearded in the prison. That was one of the things that marked him as a Hebrew. Maybe. Where were we? Verse 15. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. 
And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. No, I, I mentioned this in the in the in in my prologue or in my my introductory introdu introductory ramblings that Joseph never attributes his ability to dream or interpret dreams to himself. He always gives God the glory. Um, so he's saying that it's God's power, not his. So 17, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood up upon the bank of the river, and behold, there came up out of the river seven kind, fat-fleshed and well-favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, lean such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for, for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them. But they were still in favor. They were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and beheld, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered thin and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And thine ears and the, and the thin ears devoured the seven good ears. And I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. 25. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. It's interesting that God didn't show Joseph. God showed Pharaoh and put Joseph in a position to be able to interpret him. Let's say that Joseph was in prison and he had these dreams. What could he have done? Nothing. He couldn't do anything. Um, so he had to, uh, God had to give these um, just a minute, my, my son says, hey, I'm busy, you're going to have to wait. Sorry. I have children. Stop knocking, I'm busy. So, um, I have children. This is just the, the realities of life. I can, I can stow away, I lock the door in our spare bedroom. <laughs> And they still find their way to, to knock. and <laughs> So, anyways, I love my children. I would never want anything other, uh, otherwise. Um, so, back to the, 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 what I was saying. God showed Pharaoh the dreams so that he could position Joseph to bless his family. Joseph could have not done nothing for his family had God given him the dreams. So... Um, it's just interesting to know that, that it was Pharaoh that received the dreams and God was, was warning Pharaoh, but he wasn't warning Pharaoh for Pharaoh's sake or for Egypt's sake. He was warning Pharaoh for Joseph's sake and for his family's sake. And we'll see that. And so it, it just shows, proves to show that God works through um, non-believers. Let's say that uh, we have uh, a president. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything to any current president or president elect. I'm just in general. We could have a wicked president, and God could still use them despite their wickedness. God was able to use Pharaoh. Now we don't know what kind of man he was. We know he wasn't a believer. He wasn't a Hebrew. Um, we know that. Um, Egypt had their own beliefs, their own religion, and uh, but God used that man, and God does that today. He uses men despite themselves for His good, and that's what He did here. So, um, Twenty-five. 
And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kind are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream years, the dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. See, Joseph is recognizing too. He's like, look, bud, I didn't have this dream. God is speaking to you. You might want to listen to what God is saying because this is not, this is from God, this, this dream. Verse 29, Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt, and there shall rise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land, and the plenty shall be known in the land by reason of that famine. Following for it shall be very grievous, and for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God, and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up a, the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay a corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in verse 37, and the thing was good in the eyes of the Pharaoh and in his eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto this, his servant, Can we find such a one as this, is a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And, he, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. I'm sure that Pharaoh had investigated who this Joseph character was, if he was a charlatan, if he was a soothsayer. I'm sure he asked the, the, the captain of, of the prison where Joseph had been for the last years, we know probably seven, eight years, asked him about this Joseph character. So who's this Joseph? Is he weird? Is he, oh, is he prophesying strange things? Someone said to me one time, let others... How, how, what was it? Um, let others spread your reputation. Let others um, be the be your reputation. Meaning that carry yourself in such a way of integrity that you don't have to tell people who you are. Everybody around you would know exactly who you are and they will tell people who you are. So... So the jailkeeper probably told Pharaoh, look, dude, this, this guy, everything he touches is gold, and he is the most honest, the most trusting, trusted person that I, that I have. He's over all the courts, or over all the prison. So I don't think Pharaoh was just odd and, and was like, okay, since, you, since you're able to interpret these dreams, I'm going to go ahead and put you over all of Egypt. I think it was an interview process, but nonetheless, um, it's interesting to see how God sets Joseph up for this position. This position was made for Joseph, but Joseph didn't, didn't do anything to create this position. Joseph was just where he needed to be with God at the right time. Joseph was, he was doing what God wanted him to do, and so therefore God 
positioned him where he wanted, wanted him to be. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said, verse 38, And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such one as, find, as this in a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to Unto the word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all of the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and, re and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. The ring significant. We read about uh, Joseph, or not Joseph. We read about Judah, Judah. Sorry, and Tamar. Judah gave Tamar his signet, which was probably a ring, and his staff and his bracelet. Pharaoh just gave Joseph his signet. Joseph is now has the the signet of the house of Pharaoh. He is above all others. If you see this this signet you know that he reports directly to Pharaoh. Therefore, he has all authority. Verse 43, And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee and be made, and he made him ruler over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Let's stop there. We're going to stop right there. So, Joseph went from being a prisoner to being the second most powerful man in Egypt. Now, at this time, Egypt was not the powerhouse that it was um, later. Egypt was, yes, was a very powerful nation. Um, but it's because of Joseph, that, and we're going to see this, it's because of Joseph that Egypt becomes the most wealthy and the most powerful nation in all the area. Um, it's because God touches everything Joseph touched. God blessed. And uh, so we'll see that. And this gets, I love this story because it's, it's heartwarming. It's, it's encouraging. Um, you never know what God, where God's going to put you when you walk with him. If you're not walking with God, if you're not keeping his commandments and you're not walking uprightly before God, you might miss the boat. God's not going to put you in a um, powerful position like this. Now, God's going to use you despite, your, despite yourself. We see that with Judah. Uh, we saw that with Pharaoh. Even if, you, even if God does bless you and you are a wicked man or a wicked woman, God's going to use you despite who you are. But it's very important for us to always be walking righteously, uprightly, keeping God's commandments, being honest with our dealings with other men. Because you never know who's going to be watching. People are always watching. You never know who's going to be noticing. People always notice. Um, and in the end, God always notices. So, have a wonderful evening. Um, and we will see you again later. I'm looking forward to this. I love, I'm sure you already know, I love Genesis. I just, it just, Gets me all excited. Gets me um, tickled. I love Exodus too. Let's wait till we get to Exodus. Exodus is great too. Um, sometimes numbers you have to get through, but we will. Uh, but have a wonderful evening, and uh, God bless.